the charity of the week. Jewin, just remind us, how far did you get with your riding for the disabled? Because you did quite well, didn't you? I did, yes. I've um, been across to compete at the national championships for the Isle of Man um, for the riding for the disabled. Um, and I won my class a couple of times, so I'm technically a former national championship in my class. And I think this is incredible because you are blind and the mm-hmm. idea of you getting on a horse yep. and sort of, you were telling us off air there that uh, one of the, the classes that you were in was the walk, trot, canter. So you basically get on this horse and have to canter this horse. I mean, do you have no fear at all? Um, I do have some fear, but the handy thing is that the horse generally isn't going to walk itself into a wall. So I have a lot of reliance as well that the horse knows what they're doing. But um, yeah, so I started with the riding for the disabled when I was four years old and um, before I had kind of before we knew I had any eyesight conditions. So that's when I really started riding. But what really um, what really solidified my riding was being with Rachel, one of our coaches and her absolute commitment and confidence in me as a rider Um, and she was definitely one of the biggest driving aids to my competing when I was doing it about 10 years ago she was my instructor back then she along with Kat will be going along to the nationals I'm so excited about this well Kat we're here with you now as well and uh, tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing there I'm very excited to be going to the Nationals. It's the first time that uh, that I've ever been. I've only been with Riding for the Disabled for, for two years now and um, and been lucky enough to, to work my way up to coach. Um, I saw them on Country File and that's how I got involved and, so, and saw them competing. So it's great that we can go and get involved. I think I'm going as the, uh, the groom, um, definitely as the chauffeur and as the general cheerleader. Oh, an official photographer. Because as Jim was just saying, you know, the Isle of Man has been doing extremely well well and uh, you must be so proud of how they've been doing recently because back into the the sort of classes and the lead up to the nationals after a bit of time away from it. A hundred percent and so we have three competitors we have Sarah, Chloe and Ben um, and they all go in different tests um, because of their their different abilities. We are just so excited and so are they um, to be able to, to go to nationals which is in Hartbury. Um, in July, and so we'll we'll make sure that we that we tell you all about it afterwards. And one thing that came up that I was looking at your Facebook, which I found this extraordinary, is that they are achieving what they are achieving on borrowed ponies. So can I just clarify, they've never ridden these horses before? No, absolutely. So they uh, they just go and they, they get on and then they do their test, which they'll have been pre-given their, their test. So they have to bond with that pony and make sure that they can get it to do what they want it to do um, under test conditions um, and be amazing, which, I mean, just absolutely, it, it's just amazing, isn't it? That's incredible. I take it, June, because this is something you've experienced as well, isn't it? Is this because we're coming from the Isle of Man? Is that where the difficulty arises? Yes, yeah. So generally with the groups in the UK, what they'll do is they'll ride at a centre and they might kind of they might own their own horses or they might be able to borrow those horses and bring them to Hartbury to ride. Now the Northern Ireland team generally do take their own horses across as well, but they're not doing that this year, so they're in a similar boat. But coming from the Isle of Man, because we've never owned our own horses. It just wouldn't be fair to Rose to take her horses away from her um, to do what we need to do. And it's also incredibly expensive. Um, When I was doing it, I got half an hour on the horse beforehand before I had to do my test. And this is... So you have to gauge the horse's mood. You have to gauge how sensitive it is. um, Because when I was um, riding one time, it was a... um, blind show jumping horse that I was using it was a show jumping horse for the blind and the instructor said to me she said under no circumstances do you kick this horse you very gently squeeze um so it's just a completely alien feeling and what these riders have to do after years of getting used to these horses that they've been riding on island to then go on to a completely new horse is just phenomenal that is incredible. And uh, Kat, I should say, uh, he mentioned Rose there, just to explain who Rose is. Uh, so Rose uh, is Rose Crellin, who is the uh, the owner and coach up at uh, the Gilka Stables. Um, and she is the lady that we borrow her riding school and her ponies from. Um, and so she, her and her very dedicated and amazing team up there make sure that everything's ready for us on a Tuesday and a Friday to be able to to go and borrow borrow the place to, to go riding. How does someone who has a disability in some way, how do they get involved with riding for the Disabled Isle of Man? Okay, well, so there's a there's a couple of different ways. If 
it's a child through schools, then um, then there'll be somebody at the school that that is our point of contact. So generally, the the, the special unit coordinator would be the person that they would contact to to be in contact with us, and then they would come through the schools. Um, anybody else can just contact us through our Facebook or through our website, and we can take it from there. We have an application process, and you don't have to have previous experience or anything. This is the idea that you guys are there for them to coach them and teach them. Absolutely, come yeah. and have a go. And do you want to ask? as well about you mentioned the bonding with the horses Mm -hmm. there's just something about horses isn't there what do you get out of this i just think i mean a lot of people say to me they say oh i can't do with horses they're too big um one of my kind of one of the great friends in hereford used to say you know they bite at one end and they kick at the other but what i've said for years and years and years is that they're just big dogs they're big Uh they're gentle they just want to you know they just want to be with you they're not malicious they're just lovely lovely animals and if you're able to have a relationship with something that is quite significantly bigger than you and something that listens to you, it means that they trust you, you trust them. It's the most wonderful feeling in the world. And especially for myself as a disabled person, to have that ability to do something where other people look at you and go, wow, is a great feeling. It's oh, absolutely wonderful. And, it, you know, it's been proven, hasn't it, recently mm-hmm. horses are being used in a sort of healing capacity, yep. aren't they? So yep. they clearly have a sensitivity about them, which, yes. yeah, yeah, works in this instance. Uh, well, just remind us again then where we can find out more and how people can support your fabulous charity. Kat, tell us more. OK, so we have a website. So it's www.rda-iom.co.uk. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Please search for Riding for the Disabled Isle of Man. Love it. And uh, due in they're off to the Nationals. It's not too far off now. Have you got a message for those people that are competing then? Yep, it's just to take your time to breathe, relax, and uh, kind of we're all behind you. And uh, at the end of the day, you're doing a brilliant thing and uh, we love you.